So my name is James Hoppus. I'm on Instagram as Chuddies. Um, I'm very honored to be a part of this panel. This is a great experience for me, a very new experience for me. I've never really shown my photography in a, an official capacity. And from the previous presenters and the current presenters, these are some of my absolute favorite stereo photographers and great references for all things stereoscopy. So this is a great, great opportunity for me. So thank you very much. Um, I started taking stereo photos in May, 2019. I use primarily, actually exclusively the iPhone, uh, which is very different from a lot of other presenters in the past, but um, I also use the iPhone various apps to edit. I, um, I do the side step or cha-cha method as many other people do. I, I have a couple guidelines that keep it consistent for me and um, I, these work for me. I don't know if they're gonna work for everybody else, but I, I keep my arms very locked in my chest. I actually take a step when I do the cha-cha. I do not lean because if you lean, your camera it tends to go like this. So even if it's just a couple inches, I'm literally taking a step left and right. I take as many shots as I can, much to the dismay of my family. They know what to do when I scream freeze. Um, I, I, I sometimes take 10, 15, 25 combinations and I choose the best combination to produce the most balanced stereo photo. It's not always from the same combination. Sometimes the left from combination A is matched with the right from combination D and that actually uh, produces the best balanced stereo photo. So uh, another method I do is I use the burst feature on the iPhone. And I, I know other people do this, but I do this when I am traveling in a car or and I'm not driving. Let's make that very clear. Do not do this if you're driving, but, uh, or a train or anything that has steady movement. You can just literally hold the phone level, press the button and keep it pressed. And it takes a really rapidly um, taken series of photos. And out of that, you choose the two that are the best combination for your um, photo. But um, the problem there is that you end up with 25, 30, 40, 50, sometimes 100 photos, you really have to do the work and crossing your eyes and re relaxing and, and finding the right, the right one to match up. So I'm just going to jump into it, um, share my content. It'll just take a second here. So this is one of the first stereo photos I ever took. And this is a good example of why I do not use the app, the camera feature on the app. Uh, I just use the normal iPhone camera. Um, there's too much to line up for me on the apps. For me, I know other, other people use it, but for me, there's too much to line up the grids. And you can see in this particular photo, it's a little distorted, but I saved it. This place in Italy was a photographer's dream. I could, I could take photos very easily here. I, I trimmed the right side. So if you notice the right side, the right photo is narrower than the left. However, the content matches what I trimmed was content that didn't match beyond the wall, beyond that flower pot in the, in, on the right side. So you end up with a photo that has two different sizes, but the content matches. Um, that's something I do a lot. I'm sure other people do that as well. This was one of the first photos I took with the burst that actually I really, really liked. I love taking photos of pylons. I know it's not the most flattering feature on our Earth's landscape, but it's a stereo photographer's dream. These, the, the lines really give you a, a, a good way to, to balance a photo. This is one of the first I took. These photos are actually about six or seven apart on the burst sequence that I was talking about. So they're not taken next to each other. They're, they're, they're far apart. Um, but I like how the lines just kind of pop over your head. Here's another example of a pylon photo. Normally I would cut out the foreground, but this kind of matches and it's balanced. I, I lined up the trees. Uh, there's another pylon, this one's in Italy. This is again a, a burst. These were taken pretty close together, maybe three or four apart. This is one in uh, somewhere in Western Pennsylvania. And those little dots in the left-hand corner, those are birds sitting on the wires. 
This one I didn't really think much of when I first put it out, but I think stairs with animals seem to be popular with people. I got quite a response from it. There's one cow in the center um, that appears to be moving. The rest of the cows are just eating, right? They're not doing anything, but the one cow is, is moving, but these photos are taken so closely together that the movement is not really distorting it. If you try to take photos of animals with the normal cha-cha, often the animals move and it doesn't work. This is just a lonely little train station as the pandemic started in Pennsylvania. I, it just struck me that day. I like how the wires fly over my head. Um, and I put this in the quad format because sometimes I like to look, I, I'll relax my eyes, look at the parallel on top, keep them relaxed and drift down to the cross. And sometimes I, I like the reverse as much as I like the parallel. This is another, the other edge of that train station. I wish I'd widened the baseline a bit. It's a little flat, but I like the lines. This is an oil pipeline. Once again, a not, not so uh, pleasing feature, but it, it was a, something very cool to take a photo of. This is a street in Philadelphia. This is also taken with a burst. You can see uh, there's a bit of movement in the traffic, a red car is crossing the street in front of the two, um, but I don't mind it. I love the coloring and the depth in the streets. This is a good example of the depth you can get in the burst method. Th that farm is really far away, but if you zoom in, you can still see depth and detail. The lighting, that's because it was really early in the morning. And it's also through a car window. Normally, I like to roll down the car windows, but my kids were sleeping, so I didn't want to wake them up. So, but if you really zoom in, there's depth in that farm in spite of how far away it was. Uh, this, I literally put the phone down on a piece of paper in Rome in the Pantheon, and I took as many combinations as I could. Click, slide the paper, click, slide the paper until I started to get strange looks and the security kind of walk towards me, but I think I got the depth in the light. I like this photo. Uh, this is my daughter putting her hand through a slime uh, bubble. This is not, this, is, this bubble is not fleeting. It doesn't pop. So I'd like to take credit for that, but it, it, it was very easy to take it. Her putting her finger in that did not pop it, uh, but you can see how it bends. And there's a, actually see the photo. Dent. Uh, I took this. A lot of people take photos of water droplets. I thought I'd give it a shot. This is hard because the cha cha so close up is really difficult to do. I think I captured the the reflection well enough, though. Um, this I like this tree both ways. It seems to work. I don't know if you can see that. If you look at it parallel and then drift down, it seems to be plausible the other way too, other than that one branch on the bottom. This is a tunnel that my daughters and I walk from middle school to the high school. Uh, I, we, we take a lot of photos in this tunnel. And this is another example of how good they are at freezing. And also I like, I like to look at the parallel on top and then drift down and look at the reverse on the bottom. I, I like the effect. Another tunnel, or I'm sorry, this is a class, uh, a school, right as the pandemic started, we were able to go in and grab the supplies out of the school before they shut the school down completely. So I was able to grab a picture of these long hallways in the school. Normally they're filled with kids, but I like the reflections in the, uh, in the tile. It makes you refocus. So you're focusing on the red and then you have to refocus again on the, tile, on the reflection. Um, this was just a random street in Rome, late night. There's a lens flare and there's movement. So I'm not too thrilled with this one, but it was well received on Instagram. So I decided to include it. I wish I'd waited until that person on the scooter had driven off, but I didn't. Uh, this was a dam in Nevada. I wish I'd put a little bit more of a baseline on it, but that walkway was only so wide. I couldn't really step any further over. So. It does flatten out. 
Uh, this is just a little trick, I guess I've played. I, uh, the drops in this one are on a car hood and there's a reflection of a tree. In the first one, the, the top is parallel, the bottom is cross. The drops are in focus. The, the reflection is not. In the next one, the drops are out of focus and the reflection is in focus. And I kind of did the same thing with here. This is actually a photo of a pylon reflected in water. The, the reflection of the pylon was upside down. So I turned this photo upside down. So the pylon is right side up and there's depth in the plants. The first one, I lined up the reflection. And then this one, I lined up the leaves in the bottom of the pond. And you can see there's a little drop on the right side, which bugged me at first, but I kind of like it now. It reminds me I'm looking at water, I guess. Um, I'm going to end with three cloud stereos. I do these a lot because my brother is a frequent flyer. Even in spite of the pandemic, he was considered an essential worker. And he sends me um, hundreds of photos that he just takes out of the airplane. And I put them together and make these combos. And I love these. I absolutely love cloud photos. To me, they're the perfect stereo opportunity. Um, that's the first one. These are just three recent ones that I put together. And you can see more of these actually on stereo site. I just put up maybe, I think six, um, but also on my Instagram page. I, I have so many that I've never posted, but because I, I don't want to saturate it and get people sick of them, but I really, really love cloud stereos. Um, that's all. Thank you so much for sharing those. There's uh, lots of great comments in the chat. Um, I'm just going to open it up to see who wants to um, ask any questions. Uh, David. Yes. Um, I have a question and a comment. Um, once you've taken or figured out the pairs you want to use, uh, are you using Stereo Photo Maker to align and crop these or some other program? Since if you're using an iPhone, you may not be a, 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 a PC user. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, you know, the reason why I'm not using the PC is because I'm no longer, I, I, I don't have a job anymore. I left my job a couple of years ago to take care of my daughters. And when you're not connected to a job, you don't spend a lot of time on PCs. I actually use the app. I use various apps to create the combos according to the cropping I want to do. There are okay. pluses and there are um, strengths and weaknesses for all of them. I don't want to plug a specific one because I know some of the creators are probably, they're on Instagram. But the one that I use the most is probably steroid, uh, i3D steroid. I think. That's well, that's, that's made by the same guy that made Stereo Photo Maker. Okay. Which is which is a PC program, and the other thing I don't know if it's in uh, the i three D steroid program, but on on the uh, the desktop version, the PC version of Stereo Photo Maker, there's a feature called the Stereo Clone Tool. Okay. And this is different from just a clone tool in Photoshop, where uh, you can clone like this would be in the for example. And this is perfect for hypers like you're doing when there is some unintended moving object that you didn't notice. Wow. And like the little guy on the scooter. And if it's just, that's a really easy one because if it's on one side and not the other, what it does is clones the area from uh, the image, let's say that doesn't have the little guy or the other way around, it could take the guy on the scooter and put him on the other side. Okay. At the depth that would be appropriate. And I won't explain how that's done. I'm going to be doing a workshop on that tool, I think in July for the LA 3D club. But there's also a, uh, I have a one page uh, tutorial that's on the Stereo Photo Maker page and I will find it and put a link in the chat. But that clone tool is really handy for, you know. Yeah, I think I could, I can think of, tons of photos that I, I have little problems like that, that I'd like to fix. So that's a yeah, great feature. And it's amazing, about. these small problems like that. And even though it's technically flat in that one little area, but it's at the right plane of depth, it, you just don't notice. And you can fix problems like that and they're virtually invisible. 
I think that's one of the one of the drawbacks to my approach simply by using the iPhone. I, I'm, I'm as I learn more, I'm seeing its limitations. There are all of these other features that you can do post oh. editing that that would help. Yeah, but me. it doesn't matter what you take it with. I, mean, oh, I know, I know. Perfect. You can still use Stereo Photo Maker to use this tool. Right. I just and, need uh, to crank up my PC. It might it might uh, require yeah, some kicking. It doesn't matter what the taking device is you can use that program. Thank you. That I'll, I'll, I'll find the link. Yeah, thank you very much. That sounds very useful. Sure. Anyone else have any um, questions or comments for James? Well, just a, a quick comment and question. First of all, I loved that reflected pylon. That was an amazing stereo. Uh, my question is, I just tried out the burst thing uh, with some nearby objects and what I got seemed to be a single file, not 12 different images. Is there a way to separate those out on the iPhone? Yeah, I think you hit the button select. It depends on your OS, right? But you go into the burst, hit select, and it will spread it out into the series. And then you choose the ones oh, that you want to okay. keep. You can choose one or two, you can choose to keep the whole series. Uh, you know, depending on what you're taking and, and how many quality photos you have, I, I sometimes tend to just choose five or six to keep or, or the whole thing, you know, but it's an easy, it's a great way to reduce unwanted movement up and down. And it also creates a, like a flat background and a real miniaturized um, look to the photo. I just, I wish I'd known about this a week ago when I, I took an Amtrak for 10 hours and passed a ton, yeah. passed tons of great rolling stock and whatnot. Well, but I wasn't able to click the shutter fast enough to. Right. The only reason I knew it, I was sitting in a car for eight hours and I was, said to my wife, man, I wish I could just take the photos really quickly. And my daughter, if anybody has kids, they are so much better at this stuff. But she said, daddy, use the burst feature. So she taught me how to do it. And the rest is history. And. So I, 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 and she was seven at the time, seven, eight years old. So she's the reason why I, I, I use that feature. Well, beautiful work, much appreciated. Thank you very much. We have a couple more minutes. Any um, questions for James? I did see that um, Pascal dropped a link to his gallery on Stereosite in the chat. If anyone missed that there so we might have to scroll up a bit because there are so many comments on how excellent your work is James <laughs> and then I see that David uh, dropped in the link to the um, instructions for the stereo maker stereo clone tool instructions so check those out any other questions or comments Well, thank you, James, so much for um, agreeing to come and share your work. And well, thank you very much for having me. That was, was a great experience.